Champion selected for this one. USF White now on the boost side as the graphic didn't switch over. My rage is uh, is incountable. I'm not. I don't like that it didn't update. Hopefully it will here soon. So ignore the pictures. They're on the wrong side. And the first ban going to be that Echo. So you can okay, see. So did you manage to get in? Our overreaction. No, actually, it's uh, there wasn't a spot in the players. The only spectator spot to available, and it won't automatically assign you. Gotcha. So I'm just going to watch your, your screen. Alrighty. So, Echo, the first takeaway there from Number. So, I'm happy to see that they have identified that they don't want to allow Sam Houston to have that. It's going to be the Renata takeaway there on the red side for Sam Houston. Yeah, I still think this Echo band is a bit of an overreact. Um, unless you just really don't feel like you have a cost that can function into it. They are really getting styling champions here with the and another mid lane band. Absolutely. So, now that we're starting to take mid laners, obviously the focus there for USF is to continue to try and target style. So they have identified, at least in their strategy, that he is the problem. We should see what they'll try and take away from him in terms of picks and see what else they can deny. Next going to be the final takeaway there. Yeah, so we've got four mid lane bands. We've got the lane band out. Let's see for USF what they consider the priority pick. Camille, an interesting way to open this draft. That is a strong scaling and pick potential champion. So I am interested to see what they want to pair with that. Generally, when you're taking Camille, you want to build towards the side lane. And we see the Tom Kench coming out again for SHSU. And the Hecarim. So we are getting more standard jungle picks. Up. Absolutely. And I like the potential playmaking capability of that Camille. So it enables a lot of options as we're going to see those junglers come through. Hecarim, Jarvan answer for the side of USF. So I'm liking the comp that they're putting together. Similar thinking to what they had in the other one, actually. But I think a little bit more reliable now because you do have split pushing threat with that Camille. You do have the ability to start off some more reliable team fights. So I think just doubling down on having that CC. Whereas for Sam Houston... If they lock that Akali in, this draft goes from about 50 to 100 in a second. They do. Okay. Let's talk about the Akali because this was one of the 80 picks that we highlighted in the early lobby when we were analyzing exactly what these teams might want to do. So this is why I say you don't want to overreact with an Echo ban. Akali is going to function so similarly to Echo. If you genuinely don't want to have to play against mid assassins you have to draft in a way that shuts down the mid assassins and that honestly would have meant just switching off the victor right pick, as, well? as we already have a ton of dive here built in for usf it is interesting to me that they continued with the victor pick after seeing how much it struggled last game the big thing for me when you're looking at these two champions is how these guys are going to be able to pilot those two champions because akali is a champion that has so much mobility around the map and is able to move the to top and bot fairly efficiently. And if she doesn't get kills, becomes this sort of oppressive 1v1 threat that could just take on anybody at any given time, even some of the split pushing. Like, even Camille is not going to be safe from a call if she gets kills. Is Zaya going to be the denial away from there? So, eliminating the safety that Sam Houston would have from some of that dive threat. That is a champion we talked about in pre-production. That is a brilliant ban by USF because that is one of very few AD carries that a Camille or a Jarvan is really going to suffer into. Is this Nasus support? I want to know where that Nasus is going. I That's gotta be Nasus support. I I I don't know where he's going. I'm not even gonna speculate until I see it locked in. If that's a Nasus support into a karma, you have to feel like that makes this lane suffer. If this that is, is going good. bot lane with Siri, okay. this is going to be this rough is, for them. This is a real pick. This is legitimate. So okay, the tell entire us about idea it. with NASA's support is into short range ADCs like Vayne, like Callista. The Wither gets immense value. Generally, you want to pair it with a lethality ADC like the Zaya because his E also shreds armor. So the, the, the idea and what you try to do is have Nasus walk up, EW the enemy ADC, and then just have your ADC dump a bunch of lethality-based abilities on their head, and a, a Callista or a Vayne cannot answer. So that is 100% Nasus as a counterpick to the Vayne, which I think is brilliant, and it's something we're starting to see in some of the eastern regions in solo queue. This right here is ahead of its time. I don't care about results-based analysis. I like that pick regardless <laughs> of how it plays out in-game. 
Cam Houston and USF go against each other potentially one more time in game two. USF. Yep, so we did. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. We did get the comment here, so a little more lane focus. I'm going to be talking about this NASA's pick way too much this game. I actually love that USF had the nerve to pull this pick out after dropping game one because this is a brilliant counter pick in a dive comp. You wither this vein and then you throw a Jarvan and a Camille at her and Vayne just doesn't get to play the game. It is going to be really interesting to see if they're able to execute this idea. And just like everything, it is going to come down to the success of that execution to determine this team fight. And there is a lot riding on it for them as well in terms of making sure that that Nasus is actually a playmaking piece for them because Minions. this champion's not going to be doing a whole lot uh, of anything else, to be honest with you. If, if it's just dying over and over again, it's just going to become a free source of gold for Sam Houston. So look to see them play early on in that bot lane. Look to see them try and get Tanuki as ahead as they possibly can. And I, I don't think there's too much of a scaling advantage one way or the other for both of these teams. You definitely see where Vayne becomes a late game threat just uh, as she, her cooldowns become a lot shorter and she gets access to more damage. But that's also going to be met on the side for Zeri, who I think on paper is probably the better late game scaling champion just for it. Is, oh, hold on. It's going to be a level one play. Ruben going to get a lot of damage both down. And he is below half before they even get to the lane. I'm not sure if he's going to... He's not even going to have access to the cookies. I don't think he went... That inspiration secondary. I'm not sure either. That is a rough start for the Nasus. Fortunately for him, just going to be able to spam out abilities to get his stacks off still with that support item. Another thing worth noting here, I do question the decision to go press the attack on the main. I, I just think lethal tempo tends to be better. And especially because how these two comps are functioning, right? You want to be, if you're SHSU, your comp wants to be going forward and running into USF, which one plays right into their hand to a degree. They want you to run into them, kind of chase the Zeri, and then they turn on you with their dive. Um, but that lethal tempo, a little bit of added range and the attack speed, certainly a little more valuable when you're the ones chasing and trying to start off fights. You're going to starting off five. Gonna mid. Dark Cloud trying to get a fight started off himself in this mid lane is ultimately just going to chase Style out of there. Memer Sticks waiting in the wing right now. Dark Cloud not willing to get out of that one. Has access to the flag and the dragon, the shield, so would be able to stun up style, at least momentarily. But with Hecarim in the wings, not likely going to try and take that one. So they are just going to pass each other like ships in the night. And again, no scuttle response for either yet. So waiting to see if either of those junglers are going to try and fight around that objective. Yeah, this should just be fairly standard stuff. You know, we got our level two Jarvan gank that you see every game you've got Jarvan in. Got a Hecarim going ahead with his full clear. Looks like he's actually going to off into a three camp in the scuttle. So he will return to full clearing momentarily. Yeah, so he's going to be able to get that early vision. So just buying some safety for this bot lane. And I think that's pivotal too, is to make sure that you are getting scuttles on where it's going to be most pivotal. And speaking of most pivotal, trying to knock down Tanuki, who is going to get condemned out. Just gave him way too much space, but it is going to be the double flash right now. They may not actually be safe. Heal's going to come out as well. Eskrigal getting some shielding and all summoners blown on that bot lane for USF. So Sam Houston making diving a impossibility in this early game. Yeah, the fight started off well for USF. Uh, they just were not prepared for the horse lying in wait to run them down. Barely getting out with their lives on these two champions. And this is a bot lane that... While I like the Nasus pick into Vayne, I'm not sure on how well these two champions are going to synergize together. So already being at a disadvantage there. Not a great look. Well, and this I, this kind of, I think, is further going to accentuate just how difficult of a time this Nasus is going to have. Because again, we highlighted Nasus is a champion that is known for just farming in a solo lane, getting stacks and becoming slowly tankier throughout the game. But early on, he's not going to have access to that tankiness. He's not going to be able to efficiently build some of those items. You're not playing him for damage. You're really just playing him for the poke with that comment and just trying to be this utility bot. So he is going to suffer in any of those interactions, you know. And I mean, we saw there, even with the Wither and the Exhaust being thrown out on the vein, it was almost enough to kill him. In fact, if she had, if Eshigal had not thrown down the Condemn, it likely would have been a kill uh, onto Tanuki and even maybe even into Ruben. Yeah, absolutely. And the uh, you are correct in that Nasus losing out on those stacks is going to affect his uh, late game viability as a frontliner and someone that can just run down your backline. But that's a that, that's one adaptation that 
uh, is going to have to be made here is understanding that that is not the way that this champion wants to play. That is yeah. not how NASA support wants to play the game. And we will keep our eyes peeled to see how that goes in that bot lane. Memer sticks forced off of the scuttle. Jarvan able to take a bit, little bit easier trade pattern there. And Dark Cloud, having gotten that scuttle, has access to this top lane. I look, he should have known this was happening. He's going to get the dash out. Command sweep. Going to go wide there is going to stun up eye hooks, but it's not going to stop the flag and the drag. I lucky. Oh, he may be able to get himself out of this one. Tongue Lash is going to do it, and now he may be able to turn this around on Dark Cloud. Fantastic outplay from the Sam Houston top laner. Dark Cloud forced to flash down himself, gets stunned up. This is going to be a double kill for I lucky. Did an I lucky diff in the top lane. What a turnaround. Waiting out the grass proc. The Tongue Lash landing true. Incredible stuff there by I lucky to punish. Which should have just been an easy early play. Oh, we have oh, a fine bot. Speaking of punish, that's not going to be the Edeskrigal just going to punish the lack of summoners that this USF bot lane had. And that's that's what you have. That's what happens when you push too far and you get all those summoners blown. So Sam Houston just free to take that fight, knowing that the jungle was down, knowing that there was going to be no response from USF. A style looking to jump in here. Not a fight he may be able to take, though. His number has access to the ultimate. It hasn't dropped it yet. And he's going to drop it straight on top of Style, who's forced to ultimate out back the way he came so still not a bad trade you know style gonna come away from that up in health but going back to both of the side lanes finding advantages here early that is rough for the camille sure you're gonna outscale this tom kench eventually but tom kench is a sneaky powerful lane bully into especially into scaling tops so that's that's 700 gold going over to Tom Kench early along with the CS lead. As you can see, the Bomby Cinder and the Plated Steel Caps already completed there. That lane is not going to be fun for Hooks. Oh, for sure it's not. And if you even calculate, I mean, yes, the Camille does have access to the Sheen, but that's not going to be enough to get you damage against a Frog Boy. That's not going to be enough to overcome the shield that I like he's going to have. And I think a little bit of credit where credit's due, you don't want to over hi Lucky yet because there is still a lot to prove. But he is showing improvement in this game. I mean, the last game, he didn't suffer from some of the more accentuated problems that he's had in some of his other games, right? He did overpush sometimes, was in a position where he shouldn't have been, but ultimately didn't die and didn't overforce his lo a lot like he had in the previous game. And even in this matchup, outplaying the dive attempt there for multiple members, he's going to swallow up hooks there. Throw him underneath the oh, tower. This, this is going to be enough for another kill. He's going to dash in. Hooks has nowhere to go. One more tongue lash will do it. Hooks just trying to juke his way out of here. But the only thing he's going to do is juke himself into a death fountain. This is going to be three kills for the Sam Houston top laner, and I lucky already having a fantastic game, and this Camille is just going to continue to suffer in this matchup. Oh, we're not done. Memer Sticks has, might have found Ruben still. No flash yet. He's going to drop. Exhaust trying to get out. Is he going to get the last little bit of damage? No, and instead it's just going to be Dark Cloud throwing himself to death right in front of Eskergal, but number... Hooks is here. Can he manage to find something heal for Eskrigal to get the speed? He's going to find his way out. He might want to turn this to Nuki. Is only level 5. Ultimate down. Or sorry, available for him. One laser will do it, though, so he is going to donate it. But the number, he's just stayed far too long. The flash is going to come out, but they may be able to dive this. He has blue buff. He has the field. And Style, he's going to jump in. Ultimate double kill for the Sam Houston mid laner. And it's 8-1 to one and already a 3,000 gold. Sam Houston, they're making their mark on this game. It's a disaster for USF here as they stick around too long and give too much time for more members to show up. The fight started out so promising for them with them really outplaying the gank yet again, but it all just fell apart because they could not get away, could not get out. And don't let that distract you from the fact that I Lucky on the top side is also winning. So now it's just literally everyone across the board for SHSU ahead as they've opened up a 3,000 gold lead in just nine minutes of time. And it's about to insane. It's about to get a lot worse too because I Lucky is slamming a massive minion within that top lane turret. Bane is now mid lane. I'm gonna have a Kali joining her in just a couple of seconds. And obviously some of those plates going down to the bot lane. So Sam Houston gonna be very, very happy with that turn of events that Sam Houston, and we've seen this across so many of their games, when they win, they win big. They don't just win a little bit. They get stuff all across the map. They're getting tower plates. They're getting pressure. They're getting gold onto their carries. And Vayne, 2 one and one already has the boots, already starting to build through some of those items that she's going to need to become effective. And right now, this Nasus pick just not paying off for this USF squad. No, certainly not. The uh, execution here, which is what we talked about needing to be better, Definitely not better. 
it's gonna make this <laughs> make me look like a little bit of troll for talking about uh how good this pick was but i will stick with not liking the results-based analysis here as <laughs> SHSU makes this NASA's pick look even uglier. And I just really think it's interesting. Or I wonder, rather, if the mental fallout of last game being blown is showing in these early stages as USF just seems to be playing sloppily. Like, yeah. this is... It, I almost... It, it looks like a different team from what we saw in the last game where they were calculated and controlled playing this slow, defensive, patient comp. Uh, Dark Cloud's gonna... Dark Cloud gonna dive in on this one, but they do not win this 1v2, I promise you. Is this gonna be the full commit now for my lucky? Who's just going to laugh as he gets himself out of the opening? And now the Hecarim's here to be the ultimate thrown out on top of Dark Cloud. Can he get himself out, though? He has the flag, but no drag, and it's just gonna be the kill donated over to Memer Sticks. Oh, Hooks is not done. Sam Houston, yeah, they've taken that as an insult. They're not gonna let this one go. They're gonna dive this Camille. Me Style is here. Has the Shrook and Flip gonna jump in style? Absorbing these shots though is gonna die to the tower shot at the last second. I lucky going to grab it in the end, so the gold not even gonna go into Styles' pocket. But it doesn't matter because bot lane going to be down to its last couple of plates. Sam Houston, they're winning across the map. They they're not afraid of anything right now. No, still would have been nice to see that dive go a little more cleanly. All Sam had to do was crash the wave there. But credit to them for finding the dive, finding a fifth kill up on this top side. Oh, speaking of kills, Sam Houston, they may be getting some more. Ruben pops the ultimate. Eskigal is going to condemn him out, though. Exhaust, this might be the power of the Nasus we talked about. He gets on the back lane, though. Tanuki lost him in the jungle. And now he's going to have to get a Ruben. Can he get something done? No, his ultimate's going to time out here soon. And Eskigal, he's going to punish him. He's going to get on top of that Nasus. One Murado does it. It's a double kill. It looked like they had found him. But no, the only thing they find is a couple of death screens. And and Eskigal, he's having a hell of a game, 4-1-1 one, one on the vein, and he's rocking and rolling now. Massive credit to Eskigal, or Eskigal, playing around the vision that the vein ultimate denies. As soon as he tumbles during that final hour and goes invisible, he completely repositions, and I genuinely think he just caught USF off guard. Speaking of getting caught. Speaking of getting caught off guard, Style gonna get caught off guard in the mid lane. Mimer Sticks just a little too slow to that play, so we'll get one in return. But it's you're right, it's not gonna it's not gonna make up for what just happened in that bot lane. And uh, Tanuki trying to ta track that Vayne just completely pointed in the wrong direction. Even seconds after Vayne had tumbled into the other brush, I don't know if they just thought that she was in the other brush and had tumbled forward or what happened in the vision play around there. But Eskigal just was dropped aggro on and just managed to get behind Tanuki and that was just the end of that fight. Yeah, that's just the uh, the invisibility from final hour paying off in a big spot and a really brilliant and hard to predict repositioning clearly caught SHSU off guard. So that's really, really an intelligent and impressive play from Oreskigal and honestly just an outplay in a fight that they shouldn't have taken. Yep, and you're going to start to see the fallout of that across the map right now. Sam Houston just firing on all cylinders right now and Style a little bit of a level disadvantage right now, but it won't stay that way. This Akali 2-2-1 two, two, and one does have access to the Void Staff, or sorry, the Rhythmaker component. Already has the boots there, has the blasting one, so just not going to be afraid of anything. T oh, Hooks, this is, oh, oh, you hate to see it. It's going to be the full play here as it's going to be the attack underneath the tower. They're going to dive him. They're going to get him. The tower is going to go down, and Hooks is just being forced out of this game right now. Nothing he can do about it. As Escargol is winning this 1v2 in this bot lane, where they're going to come down, but... Honestly, Eskigal more than happy to absorb this pressure is Sam Houston just pushing every lane to its absolute max. Yeah, Sam at this point up far enough that they can just be a little disrespectful in these lanes. They are no longer afraid of anything USF has to throw at them because to be quite frank, USF doesn't have anything to throw at them right now. This comp isn't going to function well into them from behind. They needed this early game to go better and they're going to get snowballed on. I, I really, there's always a way, but I, I genuinely believe at this oh, point the only way sure. USF finds a way back into this game is to just have a massive throw from Sam, and well, I don't see them doing it. Right now, Kramer, we are doing better than a kill a minute. We are 16 kills of 14 minutes. Sam Houston getting ready to try and take this next dragon. Now, USF are just going to push them off of this one. It's not going to reset right now, so they are going to take this one, but they may have been caught. Flash out from Hook. Who throws the field down, but it may not be enough. Mimersix, can he get this one? Chaos Storm going to follow him. 
Now Sam Houston, though, just trying to get something out of that drag. They're going to lock down one. This is going to be the jump in from I Lucky. The kill's going to go to Espergal and Sam Houston. They're going to punish him for taking that drag. They're going to say, that wasn't yours. And they're going to start picking up kills across the board. I Lucky is dominating. Style is going to slay Hook in the background. And they're going to be made to pay for taking that drag. And we're still doing better than a kill him in. This game is a bloodbath. And Sam Houston are more than happy to keep filling the tub. Yeah, USF manages to come away with the dragon and the objective bounty, but at what cost? You, you're just hemorrhaging gold at this I'll, point. I'll tell you the kills. cost. It's 15 minutes, and it's uh, almost a 6k gold lead. That is where Sam Houston's at right now. That is uh, honestly almost unbelievable how well they have navigated this early game. It, it really is, and again, I just... I, I have to think that Tilt is playing a role in this because USF is just doing things that anybody could tell you anyone with a decent understanding of league of legends could tell you they should not be doing a lot of as uh Kedra would say illegal gaming going on here from usf in this game number two and uh it's looking like this is just going to be the last game in the series if this trend holds i mean i don't at, know how they find a way out of this look at the level advantage in the bot lane escrow has a two lane a two level advantage over tanuki 10 to 8 i mean and then you're looking across the board too it doesn't get any better it's the only way the only really area that this USF squad is winning is just in that mid lane where Hook has a very, very tentative level lead over Style. But beyond that, it's a two level lead in the jungle. It's a two level lead in the top lane. This Sam Houston squad is not just ahead with the money that they've got and the experience. I mean, they're ahead itemization as Eskigal trying to make his way to the bot lane. Gonna flash the MO. Dark just ran at him just to intimidate him, but they're not gonna get anything out of that one as Ping's coming down on top of Dark trying to make his way through that river. There's nothing to play for. There's no dragon. There's no fight to be had. Style is going to get poked out a little bit, but Sam Houston, they're happy to just continue absorbing this pressure and just let I Lucky shove in the top lane. Yeah, and uh, while we've got a second here, oh, never mind. Collapse in mid. Style, can he find his way out of this one? He's going to get seen right now by Hook. Avoids the slow. Going to try and make his way around it. Now he's going to be joined up by I Lucky, so he's going to have access to the Tom Kitch ultimate, and Sam Houston, they may want to fight this, as it's all D wombo combo. That's one down immediately. Style's going to jump out of that one and say, how dare you chase me in my side of the jungle? What's my jungle? It's all of it. It's a double kill for the Sam Houston mid laner. And Sam Houston, they cannot be checked anywhere across the map. They try to chase the Akali out, but they only chase to their death. Style with a brilliant example of walking away aggressively, leading USF directly into their own death. And just the collapse from SHSU was so fast and decisive. Once the onslaught of shadows and the abyssal voyage came down, there was nothing USF could do because they were all in a big ball in the middle of the river. Their positioning was compromised, and ultimately their health bars ended up pretty compromised as well. Kramer, two minutes ago it was 6k gold lead. It is now more than an 8k gold lead. That's how little time it took Sam Houston to snowball that one. They are absolutely punishing the overforces here by this USF squad. And honestly, like, I, you know, you talked about earlier Tilt's playing a, a, a factor in, and I think that maybe that is the case. Is they're just trying to all in eye lucky here just to see what they get. It's going to be the ultimate down there for eye hooks just to see if he can get anything, but he's just going to get out of it. A three man commitment there onto eye lucky. They're going to even have to bring up Tanuki just to lock him down. They may not get him. I like it. He's no, going to have I, access to the dash, but he's, he's going to make it out for Matt Commit, for the Frog, and who they could not bench him. They could not get him, and that's got to feel bad for USF. Unable to bench the Kench. Unable to inhibit the Ribbit as... I lucky just gets lucky again <laughs> and is going to walk away from this one. And while we've got a second to talk about this gold lead, I just want to go over. So I was able to spectate off you in the league client. So this is as of about 30 seconds ago. The top lane gold difference is about 3,800. The jungle gold difference is about 2,600. It's a T1. It's a Kramer. Difference. Oh, sorry. I thought a T5 was going to break out. I was about to say it was going to get a lot worse, but please continue. The ADC difference, about 1,800. Mid, about 13. And even the support difference is about a thousand gold in the favor of SHSU. I mean, in top lane, that's a full item. At 19 minutes, it's and you can see it on your scoreboard too. It's almost two full items worth of advantage for iLucky. This is just an unreal beatdown that SHSU is putting on USF. I mean, Hooks has only just now completed the Divine Sunderer. 
Uh, I lucky on that Tomkins has got to be feeling so good right now with the state of affairs. 7 0 and 5, having a perfect game so far. The only person that has died really has been Style in this game, and he's just been committing to get these kills, and it has absolutely been paying off for them. And uh, Oh, Kramer, I was going to highlight a pun that someone in the chat made, but I can't even do that because Eskrigal, he's just going to kill. The mid laner for USF, Eskrigal going to die to the Chaos Storm in the end, but it's going to be a teleport there for Style, who's going to be trying to run down Hook. Sam Houston started off this Dragon Melancholy. Can he live long enough? Shield going to come out. Onslaught of Shadows on top of it. Yes, it's going to be the follow-up there from Dark Cloud, but it may not be enough. Sam Houston there fighting. Style going to jump in on top of it, and it's going to be a double kill for the mid laner. Triple kill. Not going to be the quarter kill in the end, but it is going to be the dragon going over is Memer Sticks going to kill the enemy jungler. It's a full team wipe, and Sam Houston, they're running away with this game. Yeah, at this point, all I can say is that USF appears to be negative gaming. They're continuing to take these fights instead of trying to stop the bleeding, and there's just, there's no excuse for it. They are, quite frankly, getting what they deserve for not trying to slow things down at this point, and... I just can't get over how well SHSU is playing these fights, Horizon. They are simply dominating around the map. Their macro is good as well. It's not, obviously, you know, when you've got this much of a gold lead, you can basically do as you wish. Um, but you're not even seeing people randomly getting picked off or caught out. They're they're just executing well, and it's it's nice to see. We wanted a team to, you know, show that they were better than this 3 and one tie in the middle of the standings. And uh, so far, SHSU is fitting the bill. Absolutely. I mean, and the I mean, the, the most startling thing to me is the difference between I like between game one and this game. Like the improvement is uh, Eskrigal. He's gonna kill Sim here. He's he's trying to live. Hook's trying to get underneath the turret, but it's not gonna be enough. He's gonna condemn him underneath the turret. Eskrigal's gonna walk out. It's not enough. Sam Houston. They just they have total freedom to do what they want. No, oh, is he jukes hooks out of his ankles? Eskrigal's gonna die in the end. But there's not enough healing to fix that emotional damage of a Camille being juked out of her non-existent ankles. Oh my word. Style on him. You might as well change Eskrigal's name to Style right now. Is Kramer, this game, it, this is an enjoyable game to watch. Sam Houston just dominating from start to finish. And I mean, well, yeah. I mean, you highlighted it just to, to, to go off of your point. Uh, you know, there, there has to be a moment when you're in a situation like this where you have to make a decision to slow down the game and stop taking team fights. But USF have not done that. You don't want to bash them too much. But, I mean, the decision-making has just not been where it needs to be. You know, they had an excellent game one where they made some, you know, some obvious mistakes, but it's things that you very much could correct. But this game is like night and day difference. It's almost like it's a completely different team. This team is, it's like they're playing desperate. In the last... 30 total minutes of game time that we've seen out of USF across the last game and this game have quite frankly been a little embarrassing for them and not indicative of the level of play that we expected from them. They showed us, you know, really great play during the vast majority of game one until things fell apart down the stretch. And then coming into this game, they they showed it in their draft, right? They were afraid of the assassin mid pick. They, they hard pivoted away from what they'd found success on and the, their gameplay is just reflecting a team that their mental is just not there. And that's something that they'll need to look into and try to fix moving forward because this this series didn't need to go this way for them. They showed that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with SHSU. And in this game too, they just haven't lived up to it. Absolutely. And I think that's going to highlight maybe some of the difficulties that they might have against, you know, during the rest of their schedules. They look to play the last couple of games before playoff starts and I mean, we keep saying it, but the difference between game one and, and game two is startling. And Sam Houston have just you know, shown that when they have the lead, you know, they absolutely are able to execute with it and they're able to expand upon it. And that's the other thing to highlight, too, is Sam Houston has not sat on a passive goalie. They've continued to expand it every team fight. At first it was six and then it was eight. Now it's ten. And Sam Houston just continuing to be proactive. And honestly, they're in a game state right now where it is going to take a lot for this U.S. squad to really get back in it. And... I mean, just looking across itemization-wise, level-wise, they're still tremendously down. It's still a two-level advantage in the top lane. Still a two-level advantage in the jungle. It's even in the mid lane. Style, he feels comfortable taking a fight with Hook in his own jungle. Style, maybe he'll get himself out. Exhaust is going to come down. Is going to uh, ultimate out. The slow is just debilitating there. Hook trying to flash in. Style, will he get out of this one? They don't necessarily know where Sam Houston's at. But while they're trying to chase the mid laner, up top where the Baron is, Sam Houston going to get this one. Yes, you get a kill, but you sacrifice Baron. And that's a trade Sam Houston will take any day. Yeah, that is uh, definitely trading up, as they say, in the business. As we see 
style get caught out. That's not necessarily something I want to see from SHSU, just because it feels needless for them to get picked there. If they want to set up this Baron, there's ways to do it without giving a thousand gold to a Camille. Um, but I, ultimately, I don't think that's going to be consequential. Just something that maybe they consider uh, doing a little differently in the future. So, Kramer, for the last several minutes, we've been talking about the disappointment that we, I think, we're logically feeling with this USF squad right now. But obviously, a game is never over till it's over. At some point, you have to call it quits. But this game isn't over yet, right? They are still trying to fight back. They are still showing that they want to try and hang tough. So what... What do they need to do to try and get back in this one? I mean, obviously, you've got shutdown gold on a couple of members of the Sam Houston squad. But, I mean, realistically, how do they start to collect on some of those objectives and start cashing in on the bonus gold that's available to them? Okay, let me put on my rose-colored glasses here for USF. And <laughs> All right, rose-colored glasses, here we go. To get back into this game, there's still a ton of standing gold on the map. We just got a 1,000 gold onto our Camille, who has now picked up a black cleaver and is eventually going to be able to deal with the Tom Kench in the side lane. It's going to take a while to get there, but once you've got Cho'Gath ult on a three-second cooldown, you're going to be able to deal with the Tom Kench in a side lane. So that those objective bounties can start to trickle in. We can get some scaling online. I like Zeri as a champion who's being chased more than a champion who's chasing. She, her, she can do either because she just stacks ridiculous amount of mood speed over fights. But if you can find fights where Sam is running into you... Speaking of fight, Hook's just going to get fought underneath this tower. There's, he's not even safe relatively close to this base. Sam Houston is going to collect that one as easy as you please. But uh, Kramer, please continue to try and explain how they might get back into this game. Do I leave the rose-colored glasses on as reality checks me at the door? Well, I think, I, I think the biggest thing for them right now is their base isn't 100% cracked yet, although it's likely going to get that way. Sam Houston, they're going to commit right now. That's going to be the ultimate coming out there from Karma. They're going to get the speed up in the shield ring. The Mantra Q might be enough to give them the fight. I lucky he goes legendary. Sam Houston, they wouldn't even want to end this game right now. I lucky taking down Chaos Storm has the great health, though. The ultimate's going to time out at style. He wants to try and get some more. This is going to be a follow-up for Eskadrol, just trying to survive. Dark Cloud ults defensively, but it's not enough to save him. Tanuki, he's going to be the next to fall. Memer Sticks unstoppable. Sam Houston unstoppable. A double kill for the Sam Houston ADC. It's four dead for USF, and this might just be the final nail in the coffin. Kramer's the teleport's going to come out. It's the victory march for I Lucky, and this is going to be the final push. They've got Baron. They've got the minions. They've got the damage. And they've got the money bags that they're just going to continue to hook. Hook's with it ahead. He's going to live long enough to see his base fall. And Sam Houston, they're going to put their stamp on this game. And they're going to advance to form one of the standings as they beat USF 2-0.